when the Prophet ﷺ was asked which of the actions are most beloved to Allah and he said adwamuha wa in qalb, the consistent ones even if they are small. The most beloved of deeds to Allah are the consistent good deeds even if they are small. And as Aisha radiallahu anha said and Adam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when they did a good deed, they maintained that good deed. Maintaining consistency is a sign of your love for Allah and is a sign that you are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, how does it speak to the love of Allah in particular? The scholars mention it in this way. They say that if a person is able to maintain the consistency of a good deed, that's actually a testimony to its being sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because if you waver with your good deeds, then that's probably a sign that there are external circumstances that drive the performance of those good deeds or the lack of performance of those good deeds, which means that those good deeds rest upon something other than the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or at least are highly motivated by things external to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if a person is able to be consistent with a good deed, even if it's small, that's a sign that they are also consistent with their love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they're maintaining the steady presence of Allah's love and of concern for Allah's love in their lives, no matter what's happening in their lives, no matter what their emotional state is, no matter what's taking place. Think about the things from now and let them be small, reasonable goals. Take small things, inshallah, that you can continue so that you can continue the mention of those things. So again, the Prophet wasallam said, do the deeds that you are able to continue with Take things that do not exhaust you. Allah does not tire of your worship until you tire of worshiping Allah. The most beloved of deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the small ones, even if they are consistent. The Prophet peace be upon him taught us to take care of removing impurities from ourselves, of uh, making sure that our wudu is done carefully, not quickly, that every part that it's meant to touch, that the water is meant to touch, touches that we do our wudu with the proper supplications, that we freshen our breath before we come to the masjid. I mean, just imagine the Prophet, peace be upon him, he used to use the siwak. He used to purify his mouth with the toothbrush, with the siwak, every single time he would pray, right? And he didn't make it a hardship on the ummah by uh, legislating that we all had to do that. But it was in preparation for meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So prayer on time shows that you're prioritizing Allah in terms of schedule. And then the way that you pray shows that you're prioritizing Allah over your thoughts and your distractions. Now, wudu and the purification and the way that you clean yourself and the way that you really prepare yourself for those meetings really speaks to that longing that you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what the scholars mentioned. Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah, he said that when one of you goes to meet their most beloved one, then they make sure that they're they're properly you know uh, they're they're properly dressed that they uh, that they've washed up that they've sprayed their best cologne or perfume that they've combed their hair combed their beards whatever it is that they've prepared themselves in the most beautiful of ways. So how is it when you go to meet al wadud when you go to meet the most loving Allah subhanahu wa taala who loves those that purify themselves the way that you prepare yourself shows your anticipation and so taking care of the wudu is a means of taking care of that prayer as well and a means of showing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that great desire that you have to meet with Him. And these are things that are to be taken into consideration with uh, how we beautify ourselves, which we'll talk about inshallah in a future episode, but just removing things that would be offensive. So the Prophet peace be upon him said, you know, don't come to the masjid, don't come to the mosque with uh, garlic breath or ha after having eaten onions because that's offensive to the angels. It's obviously offensive to the people next to you as well, but it's offensive to the angels as well. Taking care of those things is a means of ikram. It's a means of generosity to those that are around you as well, even the angels whom you can't see, but more than anything else, a means of anticipation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you're doing your wudu, uh, you know, the Prophet peace be upon him taught us very profoundly, by the way, to use the minimal amount of water. Because a lot of people, they think that, you know, I need to purify myself. So that means let me just splash as much water on me as possible. But the Prophet peace be upon him, used very little water, but it was the attention that he paid Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be on to him, to making sure that the wudu was touching the fingers properly, getting in all of the places that it needs to get, that a person, even when they wash their feet, they go between the toes. These things seem minimal, but they express something greater. 
they express a greater attention and a greater appreciation. And as we talked about in our work, we should have itqan, that attention to detail. Likewise, in our worship, there should be attention to detail. And the way we prepare ourselves with purification is part of that atten- attention to detail. We ask Allah to make us amongst those that are spiritually purified and physically purified when we go to meet Him for the sake of spiritual purification. Allahumma ameen.